Donald Trump goes in front of a judge in Miami today. We're taking this, uh, this event extremely serious. Kaplan News is live outside the federal courthouse. Win or go home. And you don't have to score 100 points to win a basketball game. The Heat face elimination with anything but three straight wins. And a Florida four-year-old with an army of bikers behind her cancer fight. I'm, I'm happy that everyone is here for me. These stories and more coming up on Newsbreak. Hello, South Florida. I'm Kelly Sanchez. I'm Hawa Izel. Today is Tuesday, June 13th, 2023. Live from the Lee Kaplan School of Journalism and Media in North Miami, this is Kaplan News. President Trump greeting people in Doral last night. Today he is due in court. Donald Trump is set to appear in Miami court this afternoon to be indicted on federal charges. The network's Kenya Cardone is inside the federal courthouse right now. Nobody's going to be crossing this This is literally history in the making. Former President Donald Trump is the first ever of all of our American presidents to face criminal federal charges. And today's arraignment in Miami is just the starting point of it all. Former President Donald Trump is now in Miami, just hours away from his court appearance. Security is tight, and the police chief says the city is prepared. Make no mistake about it, we're taking this, uh, this event extremely serious. We know that there is a potential of things uh, taking a turn for the worse. Trump will face a total of 37 criminal charges, the majority for allegedly hoarding classified documents at his Mar-a-Lago estate. Trump denies any wrongdoing. He is expected to plead not guilty and has vowed to stay in the 2024 presidential race, even if convicted, using the stages at his campaigns to rail against the charges. It's a horrible thing for this country. I mean, the only good thing about it is it's driven my poll numbers way up. Can you believe that? The federal indictment states that the classified documents were allegedly stored in a ballroom, a bathroom, a shower, and a storage room. Trump's own former attorney general, William Barr. Those documents are among the most sensitive secrets that the country has. He had no right to maintain them and ret retain them. Unconditional support still pouring in from Trump supporters. We don't even care if he's going to be in jail and we have to write him in. You know, to a lot of us, it's like Trump or nothing. Many alike, as well as protesters expected to crowd the courthouse for the arraignment Miami's Mayor Francis Suarez, confident that they are prepared for the heat. But we're going to have the adequate forces uh, necessary to ensure that. And as I stated before, security here is very tight. This is expected to last pretty much the whole day, but not to worry. As this case unfolds with any developments, we'll be sure to bring them to you right here on Kaplan News. But for now, that's the latest here in Miami. Kenya Cardone for Kaplan News. Heartbreak for the Heat as Miami came up short and extending the NBA Finals against the Denver Nuggets. Kaplan's Brian Lopez is in the control center this morning with more on the end to Miami Heat's Cinderella playoff run. Finals that he had one goal in mind, win by any means necessary. That effort fell just five points short. I wish I could have got it done for these guys because they, they definitely deserve it. Um... But the one thing that I, I'm going to take from it is how grateful I am to be able to compete with them. The Denver Nuggets spoiled the Heat's plans of making a series comeback. Nikola Jokic led all scorers, scoring 28 points and hauling in 16 rebounds. The Heat started off slow, at one point missing 10 consecutive shots, but were led by big man Bam Adebayo, who had a strong first half, scoring 18. And it was in the fourth quarter when things began getting intense between both teams. Jimmy Butler, who had been struggling for most of the game, reawakened for Miami. We're still in position to win. You don't have to score 100 points to win a basketball game. Butler scored 14 straight for the Heat as both teams traded leads late in the game. The Nuggets pulled away with a second chance basket made by Bruce Brown and a missed three point attempt by Miami's Butler. Butler finished the game with 21 points. The Heat fought until the very end and Heat head coach Eric Spolstra acknowledges his team's efforts. Our guys, uh... We'll be able to take that quality the rest of their careers, uh, that uh, grit, the perseverance, the toughness, uh, the ability to, to compete and put yourself out there for everybody to judge um, and to be able to handle you know, different things, uh, adversity, all, all that. With their victory, the Denver Nuggets have now won their first NBA championship in franchise history. 
Nuggets big man Nikola Jokic continues to add to his resume, now winning his first title and being named the NBA Finals MVP. The Heat front office hopes to build off this season's success as they enter NBA free agency. In the Control Center, I'm Brian Lopez, Kaplan News. The Florida Panthers hope to keep their chances alive tonight in Vegas. Although the Cats were close to winning the fourth game in the series, they ultimately lost. During that game, Brandon Montour scored with four minutes left in the second quarter. Then Panthers captain Alexander Barkov scored a single goal with a backhand pass from Montour. But it just wasn't enough as the game ended 3-2. Game 5 is tonight in Vegas at 8 p.m. Yesterday, the Orlando community remembered those who lost their lives in the Pulse nightclub mass shooting seven years ago. The families of the 49 victims, as well as survivors, shared their stories in the Dr. Phillips Center for the Performing Arts. With gun violence and discrimination against Florida's LGBTQ+, intensifying, the One Pulse Foundation urged the community to stick together. I can strut in my shoes or I can attempt to walk in others, but I've learned it's best to march for one another. What our community stood by, what we all live by, is Pulse, united as one. The June 12, 2016 attack is considered the deadliest act of violence against the LGBTQ plus community. Today, a group is working towards a safer Miami with a new drink safety campaign. Kaplan's Daniela Tolki learned more about Survivor's Pathway and its new newest mission. You may be surprised to learn that about 50% of drink spike incidents can occur at house parties, but of course it can happen at clubs and bars as well. We have seen an increase in uh, individuals that has been victims of spike drink and then uh, due to this fact there have been uh, rape and, um, and victims of different other crimes. That's why we consider uh, that it's important to educate our community and how to prevent uh, a spike drink and how to recognize uh, when a person or when a person has been uh, a victim of this crime. The Drink Safely campaign is a guide for what to do if this happens to you. To be able to recognize if your drink has been spiked, look for a foggy appearance, excessive bubbles, sinking eyes, change in color, or a salty and bitter taste. Everybody needs to be aware of where their drinks go. It is estimated that over 11 million women have been raped while intoxicated with alcohol or drugs. Unfortunately, a lot of the cases go unreported. So really, there is no way of knowing how many people have really been victims because let's not think that it can only happen to women. It can also happen to men. People who are victims of drink spiking are not at fault. If you or anyone you know who has been a victim, please call the National Sexual Assault Hotline 800-656-POL. Reporting from Kaplan News, my name is Daniela Tolki. A shocking series opener for the Marlins as they play out in Seattle. That's still ahead and so is this story. I'm, I'm happy that everyone is here for me, Aww. that I went through. A little girl has her community behind her as they rally together to fight cancer. Newsbreak will be back in two minutes. The black truck? Hey! Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Oh, is it overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm going to get back with Christina? No. Oh, no, no.
are a lot of ways to reach out to a friend about their mental health. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Bill is a family man. He invests his money wisely and provides a good life for his children. Just one problem. He often opens emails from senders he doesn't know. And his computer is not password protected. One day, Bill checked his bank account and... 94% of malware attacks originate from emails. Don't be like Bill. Take your cybersecurity seriously. A local community is writing in for one little girl to help her fight against cancer. A five-year-old girl is stronger today after her community rallies to help support her fight against cancer. Our reporter Jan Preisler has the story. Liliana Abriccio, at just five years old, has fought more than many adults have their entire lives. And over the weekend, her community near Daytona Beach joined her in her fight against cancer. I'm, re I'm happy that everyone is here for me, Aww. that I went through. When she was just four years old, she was diagnosed with a rare form of leukemia that only affects 2% of childhood patients. It was only caught after her parents noticed a fever that wouldn't go away. We actually went to the hospital just anticipating them saying, you know, it's the cold, here's, here's a medication for it or antibiotic and sent us on our, our way. It was that trip to the hospital where Liliana was diagnosed with leukemia. It flipped our world upside down. Since then, Liliana and her family have been traveling to Jacksonville regularly for her treatments with some trips lasting a day and others lasting weeks at a time. She caught a cold and she was on the tail end of a treatment, so her immune system was extremely low. So we put her in the hospital for a month, um, something as, as simple as a cold. The trips and extensive treatments are costly, and that's why the All Riders Motorcycle Club and American Legion Post 259 hosted a poker chip ride and raffles to help raise money for Liliana and her family. Every rider got a poker chip at each stop along the route, and at the end they found out its value and who the winners were. Uh, so it tugs at your heartstrings to think that a little girl her age, I think she's four or five right now, uh, is dealing with the same kind of things that a, an older person would deal with. But uh, she's amazing. The fundraiser has raised over $1,600 between the ride, donations, and winners of the cash prize raffles donating money back to the Aparicio family, bringing the D-Line community even closer. For Captain News, I am Yam Preisler. The Marlins were one of the hottest teams entering this series before getting thumped in the opener against the Seattle Mariners yesterday. After winning 12 of their last 15 games, the fish fell to the Mariners, who racked up 10 hits during last night's game in Seattle. The Marlins were limited to a lone solo home run by catcher Nick Fortes. The final score was Mariners 8, Marlins 1. The team played today in Seattle again tonight. The first pitch is scheduled for 9.40 p.m. You're watching Newsbreak, and we're coming right back. Radcliffe Art and Design Incubator is the velocity accompanying the fellow's rudder, as in a boat. Unless there is movement or action, the planned direction is of little consequence. We encourage the creative ideas into action, and from the experience of doing, we critically assess the feedback, adjust, and set out to rediscover the potentialities of an entrepreneurial mindset. Stand. 
time is precise. No margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun with it. Get weird with it. Dare to send those old STEM theories flying past the neighbor's house into outer space. Dare to program something internet breaking, record breaking. Dare to blow their minds. Dare to learn the difference between sedimentary and metamorphic rock. Go find those rocks. Dare to keep daring. Dare to STEM. Check out She Can STEM to get started. That's all the time we have for News Break. I'm Hawa Izel. I'm Kelly Sanchez. Get more news anytime at kaplannews.fiu.edu.